we're going to go ahead and get started. We have several new board members, but I thought maybe we'd just review the minutes. That was the first thing on the agenda. And then we'll do introductions. So we'll get the minutes out of the way. Madam Chair, yeah. if I have one topic I'd like to add to the agenda, oh, sure. if I could. I'm not sure when the appropriate time would be for that. If we could have a homeless sheltering update okay. for on a moment's notice. Okay. Maybe initiate that discussion. Okay. I don't think Jan was going to be here yeah, today. Jan's but. not here. She's at a conference. Okay. Well, then I'll just, when we get to that point, I'll right. lay okay. the groundwork and sure. go from there. Sounds good. If we could. Of course. Any corrections to the minutes from last time, August 17th? Okay, can I entertain a motion to approve? So moved. Second. I'll, I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Okay, let's do some introductions since we have a, a few new faces at the table. So I don't know if you want to start down at the end and go all the way around, or how you want to go about this. But. Yeah. How about if we start with we'll start with the staff and the regulars that are here, oh. and then we'll end with our two new board members and have them Perfect. give a little more detail. Okay. I'm Kim Vance, director of the WIC program at Public Health. Suzanne Schaefer, Director of Nursing, Public Health. And Desi Fleming, Director of Public Health. I'm Chelsea Matter. I'm Chris Anderson, I'm the Physician Representative. I'm John Strand, City Commission. Uh, I'm Justin Bohr, I am the Public Health Analyst and Accreditation Coordinator for Good afternoon. I'm Larry Anderson. I oversee our public health clinic, our employee health area, as well as our health promotion division. Uh, Preston Niesemeyer, Fargo Cass Public Health, a community health educator. Linda Anderson, principal office associate. Great, excellent. Robin, do you want to go? Sure. Well, thank you for letting me be part of this board. I'm pretty excited. I'm here representing the Fargo School Board. Um, I was just reelected to my fourth term. Um, had a nice coffee with Dinah, and she okay. talked about how much she enjoyed this, this committee. Um, I'm also the legislative chair for the school district, so I'm very active at the state and federal level. So I noticed some of your advocacy pieces here. My full-time job, I am the CEO for the Boys and Girls Club and the Fargo Youth Commission. So we are in um, 10 schools, and we have two buildings that we own. And um, I had the privilege of attending the retirement party about a month ago. Welcome, Robin. Thank, Thank you. you. And Lynn? Hi, my name is Lynn Telford, and I am the new community representative for the board. I work at Essentia Health as a nurse um, in the quality department. My background is emergency nursing, so I worked with Dr. Anderson for a few years. And then through my work as an emergency nurse, I've been um, involved with the government relations. I've been the government affairs chair for the Emergency Nurses Association for North Dakota for the past three years and have done uh, quite a bit of work at the federal level with the ENA. So I'm really excited to be on this board and uh, get to contribute to City of Fargo. So thank you guys. Excellent. Well, mm -hmm. We're very excited to have you both and great backgrounds for this board. <clears throat> All right. So next on the agenda is environmental fee increase. Yeah, we're, Grant Larson couldn't be here today, but he just wanted to make you aware that the commission has already approved. Um, there was a 5% increase on the environmental fees this year. Um, usually about every two years now, we look at those fees and um, try to get them more in line with our actual costs and inflation type things. Um, historically, if you remember, they had quite a time where they didn't up any fees and then they ended up having a pretty big jump and so from commission recommendations it was thought it'd be better that they would go up smaller increments and look at things more often so just so you know that there has been a, a fee increase that has been implemented 
Thank you. Any questions on that? Okay. Yeah, and the, the next agenda item is actually just a fact finding because we had a renewal come across. So this um, must be an association that the board has been involved with. And so I just wanted to bring it um, forward to make sure that this is something that that we use that people find valuable. Um, I'm very happy to um, resubmit for renewal, but I just want to make sure that it's it's been utilized as a resource. I, I did contact some other local public health agencies just because I don't have the background with this agency, and there's most of them have let it lapse for one reason or another. Um, I believe Grand Forks is still in active membership. So just wanted to get feedback from you guys if if you're you know if you've had much resources or help as being a part of this organization and if I should reapply. I think it's it's three hundred dollars to do the yearly membership for the board. Okay. So the National Association of Local Boards of Health, I think Initially, when I came on board, I had gotten an email about it, but then there was no other discussion about that, so I don't know if anybody else has seen anything from this particular organization. I don't, I don't know enough about it from the one email that I got years ago to say if it's of value or not. It could be. I don't know what types of things they do, um, but I don't know if anybody else has gotten any information from them I personally did not know it existed I don't okay, know right. <laughs> what what you know if it if it has value I think that would be good to find out but I don't okay. know if it's and, and I can do a little bit more research I know that Grand Forks director said that they have a good national conference and but that was really the she didn't really talk about okay. um, other resources just that they put on a good conference nationally but and Ruth didn't mention anything about it, so that's why it's it's the renewal notice came is kind of how I was even came to light. So I can certainly do some more checking, but I just wanted to see if any of you had any background on it. So I would, yeah, I would maybe we put it on next uh, meeting's agenda. Yep, to, yeah, I can relook and see what I can find and. There's no financial penalty if we let it lapse and then I, yeah, I'm something. sure it's I've, probably one of those that is due by January, so I okay. you know just keep getting renewal notices. So I, I okay. think we're good to wait. Okay, it's just I just thought I would throw it out there to see if anybody had any Perfect information. Enough. I'll look at it as well. Okay, too, just to thank you. See if there's anything else. Okay, I have uh, one other announcement if I if oh, I may. Sure. So uh, Linda Anderson has been uh, an employee for the for the city of Fargo and the health department here for 41 years, and this is uh, her last board meeting before retirement uh, in December. So she happens to be my mom as well, <laughs> as you may know. But uh, I thought you know 41 years is a is a long uh, record of service, and and it's, she's been very loyal to this organization, and it's, the organization's given a lot to to her and and our family. So I just wanted to. Take a moment to recognize her. Yes, thank you, Linda. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I will say that we're having like sleepless nights thinking about <laughs> replacing your mom because she's very near and dear to all of us. So thank you for that. I forgot that. Okay. Next item on the agenda is budget. You so Melissa, Melissa couldn't be here today either. She's um, out of town. And so if there's anything, questions you have, I can sure try to answer. If not, we can make note and um, have her answer specifics and email things out as well. Um, she did say some of the higher percentages for um, on the expenditure part that usually has to do with the timing of grants and some ending and some starting and just kind of when that money sometimes there's a little lag and so that's why it looks like some of the percentages are higher I have a question are these uh, is your calendar are you on a calendar year for your budget yeah January for the budget we are some of the grants 
So we'll go sure. August to August, and so that's why it tends to it can throw things off a little bit. But yes, citywide we are. Okay. Other questions about the budget? Thank you for getting that out in advance. It's helpful for us. We get a chance to review it ahead of time. Appreciate that. And that was just an update. You don't need us to do anything with that item, correct? Okay. And the next one would be mine as well. Um, I, I was thinking maybe our, our health officer might have made it today, but um, so she has started, Dr. Um, Heidi Laco Adamson has started with us. Um, unfortunately, she's been out on leave for um, probably a month or so now. So um, we did get the necessary things signed that we needed to, to cover for standing orders, for immunizations, for all of our um, program services, for our Narcan education, emergency orders, all of those things are signed. So we are good from a um, programming standpoint and staff are covered. She just hasn't been in the office with us a lot to um, do some of the other things. So typically at these meetings, she would give an update. And so, okay. um, but that's kind of where we're at with, with things. So we have a health officer now? We do, yep. Could you update us a little bit? I'm catching up with that information. Sure. So sh probably the beginning of September, okay. I think, is when you know they did that RFP process and didn't get much of um, interest in that. So Dr. Laco does, um, she oversees like detox in Clay County, different fire police type things. She has an emergency room background. And so Ruth made contact with her about if we could do like a 10 hour a week proposal, which is down a little bit obviously from what we had Dr. Baird. Um, but we were kind of knowing that we needed to get our <laughs> standing orders and things like that covered. We were willing to see if that would work for us. So. We did a one-year contract with her um, just to see she was willing to do it and it's kind of you know for as long as we need her or for if we would find that we need more for our needs we can certainly you know do a different process going forward but so she did start and and come but then like I said needed to be out on leave and so she probably was with us for about a week or a week and a half and um, we have been in contact via email and we can get a hold of her that way but just on site she hasn't been with us thank you for the update. Mm -hmm. I think she was also the medical director for FM ambulance as well, right yeah there, okay. it's a she does a, a lot of community things so okay thank you and legislative so, yeah, topics as well so um, this is going to be a couple part of it I will just talk about Sacho and then I'll turn it over to Larry and Preston to talk about our, our specific requests from you um, as you know our Sacho is the organization that um, local public health belongs to that they are kind of our since we are not able to lobby they kind of take on the interests of public health and can um, bring issues on our behalf statewide and so we we partner with them so they have presented this was early on probably about a month or so ago they presented some issues that they are um, wanted to come up with some resolutions for so that sheet is in your packet and the public health funding of course that's our state aid that's the funding from the state that we have flexibility to put towards where we need um, it's a really important piece that supports a lot of our programming so that is of course something that's very important to us um, the tobacco tax and this is one that Larry and Preston will talk a little bit more detail about but that's one that they are supporting as well um, that was a couple of years back that they tried to do the tobacco tax and it didn't go through um, I think this this one is similar it's just they're kind of coming in with a lower tax number so they're going to try that again 
And then, of course, the bottom one is just on measure three, and, and Seicho just wanted to come out with a um, position statement on that, just um, saying that they don't support that measure at this time. So that's kind of where um, we're at. Chelsea, I know you sent me um, some of the other bills that are kind of starting to show up out there that have a lot to do with behavioral health. And so these haven't been brought forward from our public health counterparts yet, but I'm sure in some way they will definitely align with our harm reduction. And so we'll be watching all of those. Usually what happens is when bills get closer to the session, then we start having weekly meetings as a state, local public health, and then we talk about what's out there and how it's going to impact and you know what, what we need to do to educate on, on a position. So, But I will let Larry and Preston talk specifically about the tobacco tax portion of it. Yes, thank you. Um, Preston Niesmeyer is one of our tobacco <coughs> coordinators here at Fargo Cast Public Health. And I just wanted to share some information um, with the board today about the proposed tobacco tax that, as our understanding, will be brought forward during the 2019 legislative session. So the Board of Health can consider um, if they would like to vote to formally support a resolution increasing the North Dakota tobacco tax. Um, in the Board of Health packet that was sent out to everybody, um, you should have received a resolution to review. So I'm not going to read through the resolution. I just want to um, inform or um, bring up just a couple points related to um, the tobacco tax. Um, in the resolution, it mentions, according to the 2014 U.S. Surgeon General's report, increasing tobacco taxes have proven highly effective in preventing tobacco initiation by youth. And tobacco use remains North Dakota's leading preventable cause of death, killing more people than alcohol, AIDS, car crashes, illegal drugs, murders, and suicides combined. The current cigarette tax in North Dakota is 44 cents per pack, ranking North Dakota as one of the four cheapest tobacco states in the nation in relationship to taxes. The bill that will be brought forward to the 2019 legislative session um, will increase, or they want to, increase the North Dakota cigarette tobacco tax by $1.50 per pack, which would then leave it to $1.94 per pack um, for cigarettes. And they, for the other tobacco products, it would be a proportional amount um, for things such as cigarettes, e-cigarettes, e chewing tobacco, etc. So we'll be taxing on that as well. As Desi mentioned two years ago, the Board of Health voted to approve the tobacco tax resolution that was brought forward, but the North Dakota legislature did not pass that um, tax during the 2017 session. With the information shared today and what we know about tobacco products and its harmful effects, it's up to the Board of Health to decide if you would like to vote to support the resolution to raise North Dakota's tobacco tax. Um, I do have a question about the taxes. Where specifically were those t will those tax that it tax increase? Where will that be focused? Where will that those funds be focused? Yeah. So for the funds right now, they're not they're going to leave it up for the the legislators to decide currently where that those funds were going to go. Previously, when it was brought up, there was a lot of funding. They were directing it towards behavioral health use that funding, but so I would expect them to do something similar. At least that's what's going to likely gain more support to other public health programs. Chelsea, I have a question. So, so maybe this can happen outside the meeting. What is our role um, legislatively? Do we advocate? Um, I talk to several legislators every day, and I, I expect that some of, there will be some crossover in what I do. Do we lobby? Do we advocate? Do we contact our legislators once positions are taken? It's a good question. 
I don't know, Jesse, you want to help me out on this one? Cause well, it's... yeah. So, like I said, we as the health department, we can educate. So, um, I think as, as a department head, I can, if I feel strongly on a measure, I've been given latitude, like on measure three, for example, if I wanted to come out a little bit stronger on that, I can do that. Whereas staff, their role is to educate. We will sometimes ask the city to, to help us if we have a, you know, the city also is going to put out an RFP for someone to look after their interests in the legislative session so usually we we funnel um, our requests through those either that SHO organization or the city person but for this it's it's saying that what we're asking is that you would support just as in an advisory board um, just raising that from just from a health and safety standpoint and then we present it's, it's just kind of a public statement of that, whereas if we would need to say our, our Board of Health supports, you CHO know. brings that forward typically. Right. They'll list all the right. public health. So we don't, boards. we don't necessarily, you know, we have like the legislative days that, um, like when the city commission hosts legislators and things like that, you know, we would be here and talk about, we can talk about some of those issues that we would support. We just don't typically, lobby we usually do the lobbying through the correct entities that so we educate Not on why it's important i think as far as the board goes though i i feel as though we can we can advocate for things that that make sense maybe a little bit more strongly than those and, and certainly any of our <coughs> staff on their own personal time can feel free to contact legislators or voice their opinion on their topics that are passionate for them. Would you like legislative updates from the school district that are related to this board? Yep, I think that would be helpful. Our number one legislative issue is social emotional health mm -hmm. and, and um, mm -hmm. some of those kids that have some of the, the bigger struggles with behavioral issues. So mm -hmm. that, that will be our number one priority. Yep. And advocating most likely outside of the K-12 funding education formula, but in health and human services. Yep. And those are a lot of the bills, the draft bills that I had sent Desi or yeah. coming out of DHS and behavioral health. Yeah. And, and because we have school nurses within yep. the school setting, those are all important to us as well. Okay. So. Thank you. So typically, we see a lot of resolutions as far as when you want, <coughs> want to formally support something. We right. have done letters to the editor in the past, too, okay. advocating for a particular topic. questions on tobacco tax. I think the ask is to sign the resolution. If, if the board would support the re resolution with the information that you know um, okay. about um, the possible bill that is more than likely going forward as well as the effects of, of tobacco. I think to clarify the resolution is really supporting the philosophy of it, the bill we may not, mm -hmm. in the end, support the funding mechanism, but we we support the idea of raising the tax. If I might ask, um, mm -hmm. Larry, how how differentiated are our vaping products uh, in this approach of our resolution versus tobacco? Because not all vapes are, are of course, nicotine based at all. That's a very good question. Um, it's my understanding that the bill that will be brought forward by Tobacco Free North Dakota um, will include a tax on e-cigarette the supplies as well as um, the um, the juice, the, the 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 liquid, and there's a group that's extremely um, passionate and they feel strongly about that because. Um, with the number of youth who are using e-cigarettes, um, FDA recently um, described um, the use by adolescents as being epidemic um, as a problem. We're over 20 percent, and now it's to the point that we're finding that um, youth are using e-cigarettes, jewels, and so on. And 
with the um, information known that increasing the tax does stop initiation um, for use to even start cigarettes, chew, e-cigarettes, -cig um, that will be um, taxed. It's pretty cut and dry with cigarettes. Um, the other pro products, um, it's my understanding, is still up, up in the air. If I might continue, um, mm -hmm. maybe Robin knows, does the youth risk survey cover vaping now? Any cigarettes? I, I'm not aware of the current R YRBS okay. questions. I know, I, can on find the, out. <coughs> I, I know in the 27th, or the most recent one, it included vaping products. They do. Okay. And it, that was in North Dakota, it was about 21% uh, of youth have tried in high school. And I would expect that probably to increase if they changed the verbiage of vaping and included jeweling. I think the survey indicates that the use of uh, regular cigarettes is down significantly, but the vapor products are up about the same percent, so it's almost a transfer of smoking. Yes, that is, that's the same information that I have read as well, and the concern now is instead of cigarettes, you know, which is great that's going down, but, but it's the e-cigarettes that statistics are showing that youth are using that. It's a new product. It's, some people think it's cool, and, um, and, it, and some of them are, are quite um, unique in the fact that you can't tell. Is, is it a pen? Is it some type of a flash drive you plug into your, your computer? So I know our tobacco coordinators have done some education. I've worked with our, um, our officers in, in the schools. Um, and, you know, educating parents on what to look for, um, you know, just in case they find a product and they're not sure, you know, is this something to plug into my computer or is it something with nic nicotine? Because, you know, as we all are aware, nic nicotine is a drug. It is addic addictive. And if we can prevent youth from star starting, I think that's a goal of pu public health. There are many products in the vapor products that uh, are more harmful than nicotine. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, the, the chemicals um, that are released in e-cigarettes, um, there's not as many um, than, say, a standard cigarette. However, I think people would be foolish to say that they're safer. There really isn't a safe use, uh, safe e-cigarette. There is starting to be more research out there related to the addictive qualities of e-cigarettes, um, of different medical conditions such as popcorn lung and, and other things. Um, because I know in the past, people you know, were real quick to say, well, where's the research? Where's the research? And there wasn't a whole lot out there because it was such a new product, but, but now more is com coming out um, related to the harmful effects of e-cigarettes. So to clarify, will any of this taxation affect the e-cigarette products? It will. It's my, it's my understanding that they do want to tax the e-cigarette supplies, the juice, the pro products, and then chew cigars and other okay. tobacco and, products. And to add to that, um, with the bill, they're going to prepare two bills. One, the first one will be comprehensive and include e-cigarettes. And if they don't support a tobacco tax, they're going to bring forward one just for e-cigarettes and components of and supplies to see if we can have at least that passed if they don't support a dollar fifty initial increase of the uh, cigarette tax but the dollar fifty is not all or nothing they're willing to go down to about a dollar okay, so they give some wiggle room on that with the legislators okay. and e-cigarettes would be a percent of wholesale <coughs> Any other questions? Okay. Madam Chair, I, I, if just another sure. general topic mm -hmm. about legislative issues as we go forward. Um, and I'm not sure when we'll see opportunities for this, but, but in, in my view, relative to the opioid uh, addictions topic, uh, I'd like to see us be uh, uh, looking at the, the issue of providing Vivitrol to folks post-incarceration and, and be aware of the implications of that and the benefits of that, the costs of that, 
and so on and, and the pros and cons of that because I, I, I hope we have that discussion uh, at, the, at the legislative level for, for providing people, especially post-incarceration or post-cleaning up and, and, and the issues of how we would do that, how others might do that across the country. Okay. I'll, I'll qualify that a little bit. Our, we had a, an immense influence last year locally in, in the discussions at this two years ago about the Good Samaritan Law issues. Uh, we had some folks in our state's, state's attorney's office that were very involved in that and, and, in, and in the harm reduction aspects of, of the needle exchange and so on. Uh, we had a, a lot of local influence there. So I hope we can keep that conversation going and keep making steps that we're leaders in the, those issues across the state. Chelsea, do you need action to yes, approve this? Yes, I do need okay. action on the, on the resolution. I, I'm, I motion that we uh, approve the resolution to raise North Dakota's tobacco tax. Okay. You got a second? I'll second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Here Opposed. Go. You're opposed? No. Okay. Do we need a full consensus? I don't know. No. Okay. Majority. <clears throat> Thank you for that. Was there any other legislative topics that we wanted to have further discussion on? We'll add Commissioner Strand's item maybe next time to talk about that? Yeah. Okay. The other two resolutions, I mean, I, I think we should, I think I would personally support those and I would hope the board would too and I think we should. Um, so there's a public health funding resolution and there's a measure three resolution. Um, so I would I would ask that we support those resolutions as well. Okay. Did you have anything prepared for signature or were Yeah, you? we we didn't. Like I said, those had come through from the SHO. Okay. Um I think with the measure three we were a like I said, we were kind of instructed to kind of take the, um, to provide education, health and safety issues, um, mainly concerning, um, you know, what recreational use and younger adolescents, the impact might be. And so that's kind of some of the messaging that we're going to do in the next few weeks. Um, we just weren't weren't really supposed to talk to the measure specifically but okay. um, certainly we have major health and safety concerns about how that would impact the community and our youth how do you propose how are you going to educate <coughs> through which vehicles with our um, health promotion department we're, we're gonna hopefully um, utilize a variety of diff different means um, so social media tends to be our most popular means, and we're doing more and more with so social me media. Um, just looking at different um, opportunities to educate parents. Um, if it's if it's a some type type of a forum, if it's some type of a, um, uh, a public service announce announcement, um, just so the ed education um, is out there. Because again, our role it will be to to ed educate the, the community as, as well. So I would say as of right now, quite a bit of work will be done on social media. The State Health Department also provides some of that messaging as well. And then the SHO group has been working with the kind of that grassroots group that opposes Metro 3. So they've been doing some work on that end. Unintended. <laughs> yes, that was. I'm Thank you for attended. catching that. <laughs> what's, what's the punishment if we take a position on the resolution? I, the board, I, I there's didn't. nothing. Yeah, you, right. you, you just can't use any um, public, excuse me, I just took a bite. Of course, <laughs> you can't use any um, funds through the city to advocate or make copies, but you can certainly educate. So for the board, I don't think there is. Okay. Now, I know Essentia sure. Health has taken a stance against number th mm -hmm. measure three, and I don't, I don't know what, if Sanford's made a, yes, a public stance yet, but I think it would be important 
that the health community in general unite and, and take a stance against it if we feel it's harmful in it, and I personally do. So that's why I think it, I think this board should make okay. their feelings known, and I, I would uh, ask that we um, support the resolution. Okay. Is a motion? I, I would make a motion to support the uh, resolution as written on initiated measure three. I think we should do a separate resolution okay. uh, motion to support the resolution on the public health funding. So. Okay. Do I have a second on the uh, measure three resolution? I will second that. Great. All those in favor say aye. I, I would Go ahead. Have, Sorry. If I might, Madam Chair, I, it, I, won't, you know, I don't want to surprise you that I'm very left leaning often. Um, and I was a sponsor of the medical marijuana bill as well that people voted on. And my, my general sense personally, and I respect the board's position here, and I'm not surprised at all. My view is relative to the addictions and opioid issues, we need to give people help and options in their lives that are non-opioid related and, and adult use of mar mar marijuana will open up a lot of avenues of support for people too. Uh, and we, so but don't be taking it personally when I oppose this. Uh, I'm also looking to Canada right now and other states in the country, and um, I don't think it's the end of the world. And frankly, I don't buy into the argument that pot's a, a gateway drug <coughs> entirely. I think there's a lot of gateways, but I think that people have predispositions to addictions and, and genetic predispositions as well. So it's, it's a very complicated issue, and I don't hang my hat just on that argument. Well, that's a gateway drug to bigger things, um, and with the 70,000 people dying annually of opioids right now. We have to give people help. So that's just my personal view. I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it. Okay. And, and my comment on that too is I believe that the issues with Measure 3 aren't necessarily about the fact that we shouldn't consider that as an option, but how the measure is written. Mm -hmm. That there's concerns with the regulatory structure. I mean, for me, that's personally, um, as a nurse, I see value in medical marijuana. Um, and for the things you just spoke to, but I don't like the measure the way it's written, and I think we could do better, which is why I'm in favor of Resolution. Okay. You might need a roll call. Okay, yeah, you have to help me out with this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm new to this role, so if you haven't noticed. How do I do go about doing a roll call? Uh, just uh, you Cheer can voters. ask the board members by Voting name. members, mm -hmm. okay. they support. Okay. And do you support the resolution on Measure Three? I think she's asking if you were supportive of a re resolution for Measure Three. I think they're going around the person. Right oh yeah. So Bennett, yeah. that's what you do. Last oh. name. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I'm supportive. Yes. Yes. No. Okay. And you. Motion carries? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. <laughs> and then with regard to the public health funding resolution, I'd entertain a motion for that as well. I would move to support the resolution as written. All right. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Thank you. All right. Okay. Next on the agenda is the all staff survey and performance management. Well, that's me. So, <laughs> okay. Um, well, this is kind of all wrapped up into our accreditation update, which I'll, two new members, so I'll explain. We are going through it's the national accreditation for public health, um, public health accreditation board. FAB, I always refer to it. We love our acronyms, so we get used to them quick. Um, so they set out uh, standards and measures that um, has been, oh gosh, I should have studied this before it. Um, I want to say it's less than 10% of public health departments across the country have been accredited at this point. Um, and we jumped in just over a year ago, uh, and we did our training, and we did our documentation gathering, <coughs> and we submitted our our documentation we had a site visit where they come and they check and verify everything and then they do a site visit report well from the site visit report 
they will, you know, form their decision of either accredited, not accredited, or an action plan. And it's something like 80% of health departments will get action plans. So we received an action plan. We, we were hoping to get accredited right away just so that, you know, we could go on to like doing more, but um, we have some more work to do with it. Uh, they identified, oh wait, I should ask. Anybody have questions so far on that? I know I go through it fast, but you do it all the time. You I do regulatory accreditation at Essentia, so oh, yeah, I already so know the nightmare that you're doing. You're talking right. About. <laughs> all, all the heretofores that I've added into sentences and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, they really, in our, in our documentation, they identified um, the major areas of really formalizing our processes. One of the things that they said we do really great is work with community partners, but we have this sort of loose discussion that we never have. We don't make charters to create our community partnerships and things. It's just kind of like everybody wants to be involved, so we are involved, um, which is great, but not in the sense of I need documentation to prove that we're doing it. So little hiccups there, but we're working on that. Um, so formalized, identified processes around, especially like access to care um, with our community partner group that we do our health assessment through, um, the needs assessment, we identify a little bit, but we don't have a lot otherwise of data that we can bring in. We don't have, there's not a whole lot of surveys that are going out and checking with community of like, where's the needs? What do you identify as needs? What is the, you know, access to care issues that you have for population based? So we're working on that part still. Um, identified areas really in workforce development. And again, this is again, it was more formalizing policies that we have. We do a lot to support um, staff and you know uh, continuing education and you know recognition for things but we've never really put them in policies it's always just been this is the way we do things and it's it's worked well but now we're going to formalize it um, and then uh, quality improvement and performance management which is really what we're going to dive into for the most part today um, quality improvement in the last year and a half I want to say we created uh, it's a QI council which is made up of staff members um, it doesn't have to be managers, it can be frontline staff, OAs, it can be, you know, anybody and everybody that wants to be involved. And they work within their divisions to really identify what's something that we can work to improve here. If it's something as far as like a process goes or Linda is always, uh, you know, she, she knows the world so well at Fargo Cast Public Health that I think she's finished four projects by the time anybody's even got halfway through their first. Um, as far as creating documentation just to pro like track things more, better, better communication between everybody. And what's been great with QI Council is we've really been able to work division to division to kind of break down some of those silos that we've had before. And it, it's created just a level of understanding of what other divisions do and carrying it forward. And we document all that, of course, um, so that we can go back in if something that nurses did, the nursing department did that was really great environmental health may find a way to utilize that as well. So we're building around that. Um, so our QI has, has really improved, I would say, in the last year. Uh, secondly is performance management. And this one, uh, we haven't done as much with it as we'd like, but we're changing that today. So um, within performance management, really working with our agency plans and coming up as soon as I finish our action plan, um, I'll start working on our new health assessment. Uh, which we will then, once it's finalized and we submit it to the community for feedback, we'll submit it to you for feedback. Um, once it's done, we really want a sign-off from you, that you've reviewed it and that you liked the information. If there's any other things that you'd want to add to it, um, I will say that we did add the first time I, I was able to find information on um, vaping, and that was introduced the first time that we then we have our baseline data from previously so we can build on. Um, uh, information from Homeless Coalition, we've got some data from uh, point in time counts, we've been able to add that. So there's been a lot to, we'll be able to see the change over this time. Um, and then of course it builds into our improvement plans and our strategic plan and workforce development plan and all these big plans that everybody will be able to look at. So with um, the performance management, it will increase communication with you as well and work within the executive committee, which is the leadership team. We'll have meetings uh, once a month specifically focused on performance management, which just creates our discussion of what are areas that we can focus, what are areas that you know, we need, uh, and trying to create measurable and quantifiable outcomes so that we can then determine the change that we've made. So 
Um, that said, I'm going to hop up so I can show you one of our first projects. We've created, and oh, hey, before I go there, I want to do the unveiling. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. All right. Now, if you have an iPhone, this was Holly Scott's <laughs> idea from, she's our uh, communication specialist. If you have an iPhone, all you have to do is hold the camera app <laughs> over the QR code, and it will automatically take you to the link. Um, and if you have an Android, I'm sorry, but they don't have it that way, but you can get QR code apps for free. There's a bunch of them online. <coughs> um, I made sure that they were free. And also, we have the shortcut is our um, SurveyMonkey slash R slash FCPH customer survey. So it's our first customer satisfaction survey. So we kind of, we tried to break it down and keep it really easy. I, I, this is like a... Frankenstein of like 15 different surveys I found online that people were using. And it is a thing that we want, we want to kind of tweak it as we learn, you know, what we're getting back from people, what we're hearing, what's identified. Uh, we really focused on the special needs. If we're meeting those, uh, if there's translation services that are needed, hearing services, handicap issues, um, finding out if there's documentation that, you know, people are going to require that we've never really addressed before. This is our chance to get some feedback. Um, so you can, you can see through, and it's just, it's short. I think it's nine, 10 questions, eight, eight questions. Um, Justin, who, who yeah. will have access to this data then? Uh, yes, so reporting is gonna be quarterly is what we've kind of figured. Um, so far, I will say we have three responses already, which we're very excited about. Um, and it's been just a slow rollout just to kind of see. But uh, we're thinking quarterly will probably be the way to go about it. Because if we get, I mean, up to 10 in the first quarter, I think we'll be really happy. Um, those responses will, you know, go through leadership with the performance management. We want to make sure that the staff is aware as well. We want transparency with everybody so they know what's going on. And of course, we'll bring it here as well for you guys will, to Will the review. public have access? You know, what, if I'm a um, reporter for a television station, can I call and get this data? I think, well, we haven't really discussed it. That's a very good question. But I, I, I don't know if there's anything on there that we would need to be ashamed about. So my other um, comment or maybe suggestion. Sure. So this, in order to access this survey, it looks like you have to have internet access. And I, right. I think, you know, the population you guys serve really right. might not necessarily always have internet access. So I think there needs to be another option for completing the survey. Yeah, we're going to have paper copies as well because there's, you know, if we want to hand it to somebody when they're leaving or something, so they don't have to do it necessarily always right there as well. Um, but there's definitely uh, going to be paper copies as well so we can track because there's too much of the population to miss. So. Do you need help marketing this to, to, repeat to people to take the survey? Because I have 300 families on oh. my list that get an email every day that I'm pretty sure most of them use this service. Yeah, if, if they come to Fargo Cast, we'd love to hear what they say. We'd okay. love to get some feedback. I can put it out in our newsletters. Great, yeah, that's okay. fantastic. Thank you. So anybody can take it. You just want as many people as possible. Yeah, we, we just want feedback. You know, what are we doing well? Where can we improve? And then, you know, that's part of our performance management with the leadership that they will um, identify areas that we can impact. So what if you were to have a station or a kiosk at the facility so people could take this on their way out? <clears throat> oh, we haven't, we haven't really thought of that either. This is, we're, we're still our toddlers. We're trying to figure out how we're going to go with it. But yeah, for now, what we've kind of talked about is, is just putting these <laughs> signs up like on our windows, you know, so people as they're coming into a division or heading out, they'll have a chance to scan it, see the, but yeah, that might be really nice to have a kiosk as well. Good suggestions. Okay, any other questions on our customer survey so far? Okay. So just so you're aware, the other little piece that we're doing internally with um, staff is we did a survey shortly after I started um, 
just to kind of get a, a, a pulse of what all staff were feeling about um, our, our workplace, our work culture, what they thought about, you know, if they felt listened to, all of these different things. So um, we did that and got results back on that, and I'll keep it very brief, but we were really quite pleased with, with the results. We had an 88% participation rate, which is probably the highest we've ever got on a survey. And the first question we asked was, would you refer someone to work at our facility and 94% said they would. So um, we also got some very specific comments and so our plan going forward as a management group, we actually, and we sent all of the data out to all staff so they saw every, every comment, every because we wanted to be really transparent um, just on the feedback that was received. So as a management group now our plan going forward is to work at, on that as a team kind of come up with um, actionable steps that we can take out of that data going forward just to work on things as a group. So just so you know that happened and, and we were really happy with the participation. Excellent. Certainly a lot of change yeah. for the organization so I think it's a good idea to do that. Good. Any other questions for Justin? Well, keep us keep us updated. <laughs> All right, I think the the last item on the agenda was just the 2019 yeah, meeting and then schedule. Commissioner Strand had oh. his additional items. Oh yes. Yeah. So whichever you want to do first. Do you want to go, Commissioner Strand? And I'll be quick and brief. But um, I'm I'm chair of, of of the Community Development Commission as well. And one of our, our missions and charges is to uh, the topic of homelessness. And I'm, I'm, I'm uh, anticipating uh, winter coming. And a year ago, you might recall, we, we were uh, kind of struggling as a broader community to have emergency shelters in place. And the governor of Minnesota in early January or late December created a, a declaration that made the armory and Moorhead available. And, then Dilworth stepped up and provided a facility. Um, from our end, and you know, I'm learning, but from our end, I'm trying to figure out how do we anticipate and get ahead of this going forward. Uh, like we, like say we know there's a hurricane coming at us, but we know winter's coming at us. And and I, I just want us to have all of our 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 our, our, our levels of support in, in place in proactively. So where we're kind of at is is from my sense from the city's end is to reach out to Jan and the Gladys Ray Shelter and the folks in the public health arena that this is their level of expertise. Uh, and, and so I'm open and available if any of you have thoughts and guidance how we can um, get there faster with a, a sense of, of preparatory um, work so that if it hits that we, we have uh, shelters that we can get people to. That's, so that's the topic. Don't be surprised if Desi that we will hear that and maybe they've already started some conversations with Jan and, and I'm not sure who all in your arena this would uh, relate to but um, I, I think we're all ears and and I my, my goal is is that our, I think our goal as a community is just to make sure we're anticipating it and ready. Commissioner Strand have you sent something to Jan just about I, that I, or, or should to my I? knowledge our, our city administrator and, admi and assistant they administrator are Mike Redlinger and yep. Bruce Grubb are yep. reaching out to her. But okay. I should confirm that and not assume anything. Okay. And like I and said, she, I think she's back by early next week or okay. back Sunday and probably back to work Monday or Tuesday. So okay. that would be. Okay. So this is just updating you on this topic because <coughs> we won't be meeting in for a couple more months, but winter's already coming close. Thank you. Hopefully we can stall it out a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The 2019 meeting schedule, I think, was included in packets. Looks like every other month is what is being proposed. Any concerns or conflicts? Could I could take a little bit on John's Oh, sure. I'm comment. sorry. I think it's appropriate. Uh, we brought up many needs of our community today. We've talked about several 
drug problems, nicotine, smoking, all kinds of community needs that need to be addressed. And the, the Blue Ribbon Committee set up by the mayor, and I think you're, you're on it. I'm on that too. You're on it. And uh, through that uh, organization, uh, our U.S. Attorney Myers uh, challenged the faith community to participate, and it was needed to help resolve mm -hmm. this problem and other problems. Uh, every fall, there's a prayer breakfast that's put on, and it's November 3rd on a Saturday from 9 to 10.30 at the Holiday Inn. And this year, rather than bring in a notorious speaker and so on and so forth, we decided to uh, highlight uh, what is going on and how the faith community is addressing the many problems that exist, drugs being one. I mean, everything from that to divorce to what have you. And we put together that kind of a program for the Saturday. Now, the tickets are $20 a piece for that breakfast, but uh, I have purchased a bunch of them, and I'm selling them for anybody that wants to for $10, so I'm subsidizing it. And if your budget can't handle it, they're free. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to make that known. It's a, a way that we're all uh, every organization is is getting together to try to resolve all of the problems that we have in this community. You know, Commissioner Bennett, it's always such a pleasure hearing your sage wisdom over so many years in, in so many different arenas. When you mentioned just a, an ad, uh, to share with you as well, the Blue Ribbon Commission. Um, we will be uh, represented at the National League of Cities in about a month from now, and, and, I, and I, inadvertently I will be presenting. It's not what we set out to do. I wanted to have Robin or Ann present uh, at the National League when we heard there was an opportunity uh, to do this. But when I go to these national conferences, what I'm looking for is a roadmap of what do small communities do. And, and, and it's hard to find models out there of of what they can do. Everybody easily sits around and talks about how big the problem is, but what to do. So what Fargo and our five communities and the Blue Ribbon Commission will be part of a, a national discussion about what we've done, all of us here locally, through the Dakota Medical Foundation and the Blue Ribbon Commission and the neighboring communities, and just step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step examples of things you can do on a local level. Um, and I, you know, I like where you're, where you're going with this, and. Something I ache for or yearn for at times is just more discussion so we learn more about these topics. Doesn't mean we're always acting on them and coming up with action items, but the, I'd like to learn more about vaping and, and nicotine and tobacco and, and marijuana use and medical use and adult use and homeless shelters. And you know we've, we've got so many of these topics out there that maybe we just look for opportunities in our own board to like have uh, moments where we can just like bring us up to date on topics that are relevant. Mm -hmm. Good. More. So are you, it sounds like you're almost advocating for a board reports section on the agenda and they can they can choose what's relevant and put, a, put together a quick five minute overview? Well, or we kind of anticipate, yes, and no harm in that. Right. And, and or we know this topic next month, somebody's gonna address winter, it's January, let's talk homeless shelters. Relative, you know, but yeah. Staff reports. Because you're all in the trenches. I think traditionally the health officer touched on a lot of those yeah. topics, yeah. and I think that's one of my fears um, mm -hmm. moving forward. Is we we don't have maybe as strong of a um, you know we don't have our claws dug into all these topics quite as deeply as we maybe we need to be. So we need to monitor that and mm -hmm. um, you know be be a little uh, more alert going forward that we there may be topics that we may not be yeah. discussing as fully as we should. So. Um, and I don't know what the solution to that is, but that's mm -hmm. just something we need to be aware of, I think. No, oh, that's a great point. Dr. Baird was certainly involved in a lot of different community activities, everything from hoarding to mm -hmm. ambulance stuff to, I don't know, all kinds of things. So mm -hmm. we'd want to make sure that we keep a pulse on those things. And so if, the, if there are things that we are all involved in that 
staff isn't necessarily involved, then maybe that is a good idea to take some time and make sure everybody else is aware of the events going on. So. You can do that. Okay. Any other topics before I talk about the meeting? The 2019 meeting schedule is in your packets every other month. I think that's historically what we've done. Yeah, we you, did you'll notice that the, the budget meeting is a little bit earlier than, and typically it was in June, but I think the way the city process has changed a little bit where we are kind of planning budgets starting in May, and it, it just, we felt it was prudent to move that up just so we... Um, we know the process is going to be in full swing by then, so. Is it safe to assume we'll be in the old old city chambers for this calendar? Any insight there, Mr. Strand? I think we'll be in the <laughs> new building by then. Okay. Who knows? Somebody needs to take care of me, so okay. end up going to the wrong place. Yeah, we'll be sure to. <laughs> okay. Whenever we get the okay that we're L Linda moving. will still come in once yeah. a month and call. Good. Every she, month. Called, she, called, <laughs> she called me this morning. <laughs> 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 well, She's going to worry that yeah. they need a quorum. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have her on a retainer. Yeah. <laughs> and our next meeting is December 14th, so I don't know. We'll, we'll find out where we are. So. <laughs> is there a oh, did we concern with the um, We just next. Kim pulled up saying that um, April 19th is Good Friday. On our, oh. oh, we missed that one. Okay. So that Maybe we probably that will have to alter that as most people aren't working that day. <coughs> so After I get the schedule. I'll, um, I, ha I haven't made any reservations for the meeting area yet. So okay. Okay. So we, how about if we send out a revised on that and we re revisit? Or, okay. or maybe we can just do that via email. And then you don't have to wait till the next meeting, so you can get those on your calendars. Perfect. That would be very helpful. Thank you, Kim. Okay. Any other topics anybody else wants to bring up? Okay. Otherwise, I think we can adjourn for today. Everybody enjoy your Friday. <laughs> <laughs>